In today's video, we're going to go over the metric units that we use for kinematics and mechanics. And we're going to start all the way down at the bottom with the kilogram and work our way up through all those units until we get to the watt. Now, before we get started, please don't forget to support our channel, Step by Step Science. Please subscribe. Thank you so much for subscribing. And if you're looking for additional teaching learning materials, you can find that at our Teachers Pay Teachers website. Of course, the link to that will be in the description below. And let's get started with the units for mass. What is the unit for mass that we use? That is the kilogram. That's the base unit for mass. What is a kilogram? Now, we often say the kilogram is just the amount of matter that an object contains. What it contains is atoms, and those atoms are made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. So the more mass you have, the more kilograms you have, and the more atoms, protons, neutrons, and electrons. Now, a little better, maybe more scientific definition is that mass and the kilogram is a measure of the amount of inertia that an object has. And of course, if we want to know what inertia is, inertia is an object's resistance to a change in motion. Objects don't like to have their motion change because they have inertia. And the more mass something has, the more inertia it has, and the harder it is to change its motion. Just like Newton's first law, objects at rest like to stay at rest. Objects at motion like to stay in motion unless they're acted upon by an unbalanced force. And they like to keep doing those same things because they have inertia, mass, and the kilogram. After that, we want to get that mass moving. we got to give it up some velocity, some speed. And the metric unit, the base unit, not the base unit, but the metric unit for velocity, of course, meters per second. Meters per second tells you your change in position over time. That's the definition for velocity. How your, change, how your position changes over time, sometimes we say your rate of change of position. Now, for example, you could have a velocity of 2 meters per second. What does that mean? That means that every second you go 2 meters. Your position changes 2 meters. So let's say you start... Position zero at time zero. Your position at time zero is zero meters. If your velocity is two meters per second, then after one second, you will be at a position or you will have moved two meters. After two seconds, your position or you will have moved four meters. And after three seconds, you will have moved six meters. Your position will have changed by six meters. Now, position, no, excuse me, velocity and speed are kind of the same thing, especially if we're going in one direction and not changing our direction, okay? But really, velocity is your change in position over time, and that is measured in meters per second. This is the equation we can use to calculate your velocity. It says right here, your change in position, this is delta, this is a triangle, that means your change in position over your change in time. This is not a triangle, this is the Greek letter delta, which change in or we can expand that and we say the velocity is position final minus position initial over the change in time. That's how we calculate velocity, meters per second. Now, if we want that object to change its velocity, then we got to accelerate it. And the units for acceleration are the meters per second squared. Acceleration is your change in velocity over time or your rate of change of velocity, how fast your velocity changes. You could have an acceleration, let's say, of 3 meters per second squared. Well, what does that mean? If you start at time zero with a velocity of 0 meters per second, then after one second, your velocity will have increased three meters to 3 meters per second. After two seconds, it will have increased another 3 meters per second to 6 meters per second. And after three seconds, it will have increased another 3 meters per second to 9 meters per second. So you can see acceleration is meters per second squared. Velocity is just meters per second. This is the equation we use to calculate the acceleration most often. It's the change in velocity over the change in time, which you can write as that as acceleration is velocity final minus velocity initial over the change in time. Now, a lot of times students will ask me, what is that meters per second squared? Why is it second squared? Well, acceleration tells you how much your velocity changes, how much your meters per second changes every second. So I like to explain it like this. 
It's the change in velocity over time. So here's the units for velocity, and we put that literally over time. Now, we could write the units for acceleration like, like this, but that's not the best way to do it. So we're going to simplify this. We have a fraction. We're going to make the bottom half of this into another fraction, and we're going to multiply the top and the bottom of that fraction by 1 over seconds. That will cancel the bottom half of this fraction, and we're left with meters times 1, which is just meters, and second times seconds is second squared. So that's where that comes from, because it's meters per second per second, how much your velocity changes every second, and then we simplify that to meters per second squared. That's why it's meters per second squared. Okay? I think that's very interesting. Now, of course, we're going to talk about force, because if we want to accelerate something, we have to apply a force. And a force is measured in newtons. That's the unit for newton. So for force is a newton. Okay? And a, a force is really just a push or a pull. If you put your hands on something, and you push it, or if you put your hands on something and you pull it, then you're applying a force. Just like if you attach a rope to something and pull the rope, you're applying a force to the rope, and the rope applies a force to the object. All right? This is the equation we can use to calculate the force. The force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. That's Newton's second law. The unit for that, because you see we have a mass, is a kilogram, and acceleration is in meters per second squared. Okay, so you can see the units for force is really kilogram meter per second squared, but we abbreviate that as the newton. This is what we write down. You could write down kilogram, because it's the mass, and acceleration, but normally we just write down, or all the time we just write down the newton. That is equal to a newton. If you have a force of one newton, then you're able to give a one kilogram object an acceleration of one meters per second squared. Okay? That's what one newton is. It's the amount of force needed to give a one kilogram object an acceleration of one meter per second squared. And we call that the newton. Now we have done uh, those units. Now we're going to go on to applying a force over distance, and that is going to be work. So the units for work is the joule. Okay, that's the units we capitalize after James Prescott Joule. It's a capital W is the abbreviation. And really, it's kind of hard to come up with good definitions for work and energy, but you could often say that work is the transfer of energy from one object to another along, uh, by another force along a distance. So we're going to transfer energy to an object by applying a force to it and doing that force along some distance. And then we can speed an object up, like give it kinetic energy. We can apply a force along a distance and raise it up and give it some gravitational potential energy. And this is the cal calculation we use most often to calculate work. Work is simply the force times the distance. You can say right here, a force along a distance. In order to do work, to do some joules of work, you have to apply a force, and the object has to move through some distance. The unit, if you just look at the force, is the newton. And the distance is the meter. The unit is the newton meter. Now, once again, we don't write down newton meter, although you could. We write down the joule. All right? That is equal to the joule. If you do one joule of work, then you apply a force of one newton through a distance or along a distance of one meter. So a joule is when you do one newton of force applied through a distance of one meter. All right? Now, once again, inside the newton, there's this stuff, the kilogram meter per second squared, and inside here, not inside here, but here's the meter and the meter. So we can see that if we multiply these together, we get kilogram meter squared second squared. So really, a joule is a newton meter, or it's a kilogram meter squared second squared. Now, we don't write this down usually. And we don't write this down usually. We write down the joule. But I, like, I think it's interesting to see what's inside these units, okay? Because they actually have some meaning to them. Okay, that was work and the joule. Now we have energy. Now the units for work and the units for energy are the same. Energy is the ability of an object to do work. When an object does work, okay, it uses up some of its, its energy. And once again, we have joules is the units for energy. 
Now, we're going to talk about two kinds of energy, uh, of mechanical energy, kinetic and potential. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion. This is the equation to calculate kinetic energy. It's one-half mv squared. So in order to have something have some kinetic energy, in order for an object to have kinetic energy, it has to have mass, and it has to be moving. And the unit for that is the joule. And you can see that right here, because here is the mass, which is the kilogram. Here's velocity squared, which is meter squared, second squared. And on the previous slide, I showed you that a kilogram meter squared, second squared, is a joule. So same thing. Come up with the same unit. Multiply the force times the distance, or the mass times the velocity squared, you get the same unit. Okay, now, I didn't change this because we're just going to, now we're going to talk about potential energy. Gravitational potential energy is stored energy due to its position. Okay, so once again, energy is the joule. And here's the equation we use to calculate gravitational potential energy. Now, we've got to get out of this, all that stuff, so it works out to be a joule. So what are the units? kilogram from the mass, g is an acceleration, the acceleration due to gravity, the gravitational field strength, meters per second squared, and the height that you raise something up is also measured as a distance or a height in meters. So you can see once again we get a kilogram meter squared second squared, and we call that the joule. Fascinating. Fascinating. We do work, and it's, I just want to remind you that the joule is the unit for the work for work and energy, okay? In order to do work, you have to, have some have to use some energy. If you have energy, then you can do work. That's why I like to think about it. Okay, I think this is the last one. The last one is power, okay? Power is the rate at which work is done. The unit for power is going to be the watt. See, watts, okay? Power is how much work you do per unit of time, how fast work is done. So we call that the joule second. We don't call that the joule second, but that is joules of work per second. That is the watt. When you do one watt of work, okay, when you do one, excuse me, when you exert one watt of power, you do one joule of work every second. And you can see in here now, we have the joule and the second. And then we're going to divide that because it's the work done per second. I'm going to divide that by the seconds. And then you get that in a watt, when you exert one watt of power, okay, it's one kilogram meter squared divided by seconds cubed. Once again, that's what's inside this joule second. And that's what's inside the watt, because the watt is the units for power. Power is how fast you do work. Okay? So there you go. We went through all of those units from the kilogram to the meters per second, meter per second squared, force, joules, work, energy, exerting power, and that shows you how all those things are related to each other. It's nice like that in physics. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please do all of the following. Please subscribe. Please click the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Please give it a thumbs up. Leave us a nice positive comment. And don't forget to share this video. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.